everyone. This is James Nussbaumer. And if you're hearing a Beethoven sonata in the background, don't think that you're mistaking because you are. Uh, I like to listen to classical and jazz music while I work, and I'm considering this part of my work, so maybe we can have a little Beethoven in the background here while I'm talking to you about today's video blog called How to Avoid Worrying About the Future. And before I go on, I want to dedicate this blog once again, as I did a previous one, to Dr. Wayne W. Dyer, who I consider my friend for eternity, who many of you may well know passed away uh, within the last week at age 75. Wayne has taught me so much. Um, Marianne Williamson, uh, gave a nice talk that I was able to sit in on and watch. Uh, she had said that, uh, you know, when someone dies, you know, it's sad, but it's not tragic. And Wayne's death is sad, but it's not tragic. And I like what Marianne had to say because he's taught us so much. And, you know, emotionally, we need to smile over Wayne's passing, his, his transitioning to eternal life. You know, he'd always, he had always said, um, I can't wait to transition out of here, and uh, but he knew that it would take. Uh, he'd have to wait on when his time was right, and you know I myself thought that Wayne would be one of those guys that would live to be age 100. You know he talked about swimming across frozen uh, waters and uh, over in uh, the London uh, cha the Channel over there and uh, and jogging eight miles a day and things like that. But you know that's the way it goes. So here's to Wayne Dyer my good friend for eternity who's taught me so much but how to avoid worrying about the future folks um, with determination with the determination that I inherited the words giving up were not in my vocabulary ever in my life and uh, my father taught me that well when my but when my prayers were not answered I would feel guilty and feel insecure thoughts would fester what have I done wrong? You know, God, please show me. I would ask again and again through more prayer. In my business world, 25 years as a financial advisor, I would call this type of repetition beating a dead horse. Well, I'd buy a motivational book or a cassette tape or a CD that would temporarily set me into a mode of positive outlook and I'd start to see a brighter future. But really, I was only ensuring that the future would be just like the past. Why is that? Well, first of all, these cycles would repeat throughout the years for me, becoming a vicious circle with ever-mounting frustration. I went from negative to positive, positive back to negative. Each time I'd work hard to find a more permanent positive strength, around and around like a merry-go-round at the carnival. I went and only to become dizzy and, and, and dizzying and, and exhausted and, and even more frustrated and frightened than ever before. Nothing seemed to be resolved. However, and with my heart's desire, since then I have discovered how to learn to get from nowhere to now here. Now, if you notice those two words, nowhere to now here, if you put them together, they're both spelled the same. N-O-W-H-E-R-E, -E, nowhere, N-O-W-H-E-R-E, -E, now here. So from now here, it is time to discuss what I have been learning about the promises of the ego that never seem to come true. Consider that the ego-based mind, that judgmental side of us, is no different than the land of Oz, where Dorothy traveled through in fantasy, and how it survives, the ego survives through fantasy, like the land of Oz. The ego is not the devil. I've had some people ask me that. No, because it's not the devil, because there is no devil. And the ego would like us to continue believing in a hell simply for its own link to life eternally. Since the ego in us cannot have heaven, because the only way to transition into heaven, like Wayne Dyer has done, is to be real. And the ego, which is the body, does not go to heaven. Okay? So the ego cannot transition into heaven because of its own unreality that it has projected and it and then it has projected a f so because of its unreality the ego from years ago and it passed on from generation to generation has projected a frightening firing pit below 
to try to keep us hanging on to, well, if we're not good enough to go to heaven, we'll have eternal life in hell. No, it doesn't work that way. The ego is, not but, is nothing but illusion, and so is the evil it tries to scare us with. If having nothing or being nothing sounds exciting to you, then you are trusting in a thought system that will lead you to the land of false hope. For in this nothing or no thing thought system, the ego's judgments promise you that you will have everything you think that you want. But you will discover that the Holy Spirit, the divine natural you, reverses any judgments made by the ego. A Course in Miracles goes on to say that this is so much like a, higher, like a higher court has the power to reverse a lower court's decision. Well, let me say without being religious that God's Holy Spirit, which is what I call my personal advisor or inner guide, and he is of the mind of God, just as we are also of this one mind. The Holy Spirit is installed into our minds much like a helpful antivirus device in your computer that Marianne Williamson says in her book, her beautiful book, A Return to Love. But you can, you can call your inner guide Oscar or Alice or Theodore or whatever you'd like. But because of my upbringing, I know what's appropriate for me and I feel comfortable using the name Holy Spirit. You can call it what you like, as I said. But keep in mind that religions hold no special copyright or exclusive rights to this terminology. Alone you can do nothing because all you have within is the ego when you're acting alone, which is nothing. But together with the Holy Spirit, or whatever you choose to call it, your inner guidance system, the inner real you, however you want to term, uh, uh, term, put a terminology on that, as well as the reality in others you encounter, your, which are your brothers and sisters in humanity, and in eternal divinity and their guidance too that also comes from the Holy Spirit you begin fusing a power far beyond any power you could ever master alone everyone um, my book the master of everything is on sale now wherever books are sold um, Amazon has given it a four and a half star rating I'm, I'm pleased with that but this is uh, not really about my book but um, I think if you pick it up and read it, you'll find it. It's a page turner, which people have told me. But there's a, there's a link on the description box here that you can click on to it, jamesnosbomber.com. It will take you to my Real Abundance page, and there's a couple links you may want to check out to, to, to realize maybe the power that you're missing uh, without grabbing on to what the world has to offer you. Good night, everyone, and I hope you have a tremendous uh, life and things go well with you, and good luck.